Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 185, The Duke of Hazard. One morning on the Scarloe Railway, Bertram stopped at Boulder Mountain on his way to work at the incline. Good morning, Bertram, said Thumper cheerfully. Hi, Thumper, he replied. Any drilling here at the construction site today? I'm afraid not. Apparently, the small railway on Duck's Branch Line is going to start supplying most of the island's quarry needs, so I wouldn't be surprised if this site eventually closes down. Well, it's probably for the best, agreed Bertram. It's always been a dangerous job trying to drill around bull- Ow! That hurt! What happened? asked Thumper. I think some rocks just hit me in the head. Oh, there they are again! What's going on? That's not normal, said Thumper. I think something's happening to the mountain. But before Thumper had even finished, the foundation of the construction site began to shake violently. The workman's house on the side of the track tipped over and collapsed right in front of Bertram's path. Let's get out of here, shouted Thumper. I can't go anywhere, protested Bertram. Then, all of a sudden, Boulder leaped from his perch and smashed hard into Bertram's cab. When the smoke cleared, the rock slide had stopped. Bertram? Bertram! shouted Thumper. Are you all right? But there was no reply from underneath the mountain of dirt and rubble. After several hours of digging, the workmen were finally able to remove Bertram, and Madge quickly rushed him off to the works. The narrow-gauge engines were in shock. He's pretty beat up, said Reneus quietly. I watched the whole thing unfold at Ulfstead Station, and I felt so helpless knowing there was nothing I could do. It just goes to show you how dangerous the work up here in the hills really is, said Freddy. Let's keep the track clear, said Sir Topham Hatt. We need to get all of this hazardous rubble off the line so that the trains can continue as scheduled. He turned to one of the workmen. Get an engine from the yard to bring a breakdown crane, he said swiftly. Preferably a younger, youthful one. But the only engine available was Duke. He was resting peacefully in his shed when his driver woke him. Come on, old boy, he said. We got ourselves a job to do. Huh, grunted Duke. I knew the moment I closed my eyes somebody was going to walk up and disturb the peace. And don't call me old boy, you old boy. Duke quickly found the crane and made his way over the bridge to the construction site. By then, the majority of the engines had cleared out, with the exception of Reneus's train. There's still a high possibility of falling rock, said Sir Topham Hatt. So I want you to go exchange these open coaches for some covered ones. I don't want any passengers getting bonked on the head in case there's another rock slide. Yes, sir, said Reneus quickly. Come along, girls. Looks like our journey is being cut short today. Oh, it's not fair, complained Ada. But it's such a nice day out, argued Jane. Eh, I could use a day off, said Mabel indifferently. The passengers were now stuck at Ulfstead Station until some new coaches could be found. Duke had puffed up to see if there was anything he could do to help. I'm glad those days of hard labor are behind me, he told his driver. I couldn't compete in today's world. I mean, look at this magnificent engine. Streamlined and everything. Hey, I know who you are, said Connor. You're Duke, named after his grace himself. Duke was very flattered, and they know their history, too. At last, Reneus arrived with the covered coaches. Due to the delay in trains, there were many more passengers than anticipated, and Reneus could feel the weight adding up as everyone climbed aboard. I don't know if I can do this, he admitted. These coaches seem very heavy already. Duke will have to help then, said Sir Topham Hatt. I want to get these passengers back to the station as soon as possible. They've had a long day, and so have I. Just then, Caroline the car pulled up. I'll meet you at Croven's Gate so I can be there to welcome the passengers when they arrive, said Sir Topham Hatt. And he climbed aboard, and Caroline drove away. 
Let's avoid the construction site and instead get some speed through Ulfstead Castle, said Duke, to make sure we clear that pesky bridge before the animal park. And he ran around to the back of the train to help push. Slowly but surely, the two engines managed to move the heavy coaches out of the station. Meanwhile, the pack had been called in to repair the fallen house and check on the integrity of the rest of the mountain. They were crossing under the bridge when Reneus and Duke rounded the corner. Kelly had forgotten to lower his crane from a previous project and accidentally began to remove the top of the bridge. Don't stop, shouted Reneus. We'll never be able to regain our speed. Kelly had realized what he was doing just in time and stopped immediately. Reneus and the coaches managed to clear the bridge right before it collapsed on top of Max and Monty. The two dump trucks were very upset at the situation. Oh, bother, snorted Duke. He hadn't been able to keep up with Reneus' quick pace, and he was now stranded on the other side. Looks like you're going to be stuck here for a while, said Thumper quietly. But Duke was more determined than ever. No, he said firmly. Today's been an awful day. I was awoken from my nap, have had to push a heavy train full of cranky passengers, and now the only thing that's separating me from my warm, cozy shed is this pathetic bridge. Well, you know what? I'm not sleeping outside tonight. And with a mighty heave, Duke began to move forward, but he was headed towards Boulder Mountain. Uh, Duke, where are you going? asked Thumper. I'll be back. You wait and see, he shouted. The pack and Thumper sat awkwardly in silence as they waited for Duke to reappear again. So, said Alfie quietly, any new updates on Bertram? Yeah, he's going to need a new cab and a new boiler and everything, said Nelson. He'll look like a completely different engine, said Isabella. Here I come, shouted Duke. Racing as fast as he could, Duke zoomed up the hill and promptly fell face first into the dirt. Oh, Duke, said Alfie, did you really think that was going to work? No, not really, he admitted. I guess the lesson learned here is that an engine can't jump a bridge even if he really puts his mind to it. That was entertaining, though, smiled Thumper. But the landing was a bit off, said Jack. That would have never suited his grace, you know. Yes, let's be thankful he didn't see that, chuckled Duke. The next day, after being sent to the works for some minor repairs, Duke was finally able to return to the comfort of his own shed. But the peace and quiet didn't last long. I heard about your failed attempt to jump the bridge, said Peter Sam. How did that go, Grandpuff? How do you think it went, you impertinent scallywag, seethed Duke. Go and bug somebody else, will you? Peter Sam laughed and puffed away. Duke was finally able to close his eyes and rest. It's a big scary world out there, he said to himself. I think it's better if I just stay in my shed here. And with that, Duke closed his eyes and promptly fell asleep.